If, as a kid, if you were learning about carnivorous plants, like at school, rather than something boring like photosynthesis, do you reckon you'd be more interested? Yeah, in stuff? definitely. Like if you if you'd been shown a pitcher plant, ooh, like that for example. <laughs> We've been showing these to kids around the uh, around the country. They actually found one of these big enough in Borneo that it eats rats. They have these pitcher traps that sort of lie on the ground like that. Oh God! See, that's got water in it. Do you see that? Did you get that? Get the camera on that I, water. I did see that. I did get see it. that. Look at that. This plant is eating stuff right now. It turns out these catch most things when it's rainy, so insects sort of, so they sort of smell a bit of nectar around here, and they go and have a bit of a wander on this, and they slip in. And the inside of these traps, we've got these downward pointing hairs and really waxy insides, so the insects can't crawl back up. And then the liquid inside it is even more amazing. It's like custard, it's vasoelastic. So the more you move in it, or more like quicksand, should I say, the more you move in it, the more things get stuck in there, and uh, they drown. And then these use a combination of sort of fungal enzymes that they harbour in there and their own enzymes to digest the insects. And then they use that for their nitrogen source because they live in the rainforest, which is, despite the number of plants there, really low in nutrients and stuff. Probably because of the number of plants there. That that bloody amazing, that is. Jack, are you more, are you more excited about plants now? I'm quite excited about plants, yeah. Yes. Uh, Good stuff. Become a bit more interesting when you know something about them. If wheat was carnivorous, it would be one of the most fascinating plants in the world.